and welcome to another edition of Street Fury, the show bringing you the hottest rides and sights in the import scene today. I'm Candace Keita, your host, and in today's show, we're going to be bringing you the old school versus the new school, see a spotlight on the import scene's hottest DJs in the scene, a segment on Dub Magazine, and Turbo, our man on the street, will spend some time with the sexiest import models and much, much more. So uh, let's start the have been racing since before you were even a gleam in your father's eye. And now they want to take the racing from the streets to the tracks. And along with Big Willie Robinson, the president of the Brotherhood of Street Racers, they're going to show us how. Hell, they've been, well, they've been drag racing ever since the car was invented. Basically, we'd hang out at a drive-in restaurant or uh, just a parking lot someplace and we'd talk and we'd argue about who had the faster car and we would bet the money and we'd just go out and race. We'd find what we consider to be a relatively safe place to race and we'd go race. But if you just come up along somebody on the road, you'd rev his engine, you'd rev your engine and you go. That's how it all started. racing is getting dangerous now. There's a lot of people that go out there and people are kind of going crazy. In the olden days, we'd go out there and set up a race. We do our race and everybody knows to stand clear. And these days, there's so many kids that nobody pays attention to what everybody else is doing and it just gets dangerous. People get killed, people get hurt. Cars are a lot faster, a lot more dangerous now. People can get seriously hurt street racing in cars now because they're traveling at speeds on the street where there's nobody policing the safety aspect of the vehicle. Oh. It's much faster. Our cars used to go maybe 70, 75 and a quarter mile. These cars are quick, and you don't know how quick they are until you're flying along at 110, 115 miles an hour drag racing somebody, and something happens, or you need to stop. And you're not going to be able to, and it's not going to be a little action. It's going to be big, and it's going to change your life. It's not worth it. Put your cars together, take them to a drag strip, take them somewhere where it's safe, and the worst thing that's gonna happen is you'll tow your car home. They won't take you to the cemetery. These kids need some place to exercise this excitement that they have, and if there's no place to go, they're gonna do it on the street. I know Big Willie Robinson from back in the late 70s when Terminal Island used to be open. He was very functional in trying to keep everybody off the street. Big Willie's always tried to get the youth involved in racing. His object is to make things safe for the streets of the city of Los Angeles and also for the kids who like to race. Our main goal is just bringing everybody together white, black, brown, or yellow, to have fun. We have over a million members. It's free to become a member of the Street Racers. There's no membership dues. All we do is ask that you write your name down, and we use those as petitions all over the world to get other racetracks open and going. Well, as the president of the Brotherhood, my main goal is to get them a legal place. But in the meantime, for them to try to organize, think safety. We can easily replace the car, but we can't replace you. As far as Southern California is concerned, just have patience. I will get the track open for them on Terminal Island. Our track is out there for the kids. We tell all the street racers that this is your track, so don't mess it up. If you want to race and negotiate, tell us we don't care how much you run for. If it's just for prestige, or if it's for thousands of dollars, we don't care. We just want to make sure it's a good race and everybody's happy. 
when the track is open, the streets are always a lot safer. There's a lot less action on the streets. To be honest with you, no matter what you do, seriously, I don't care if you have a track open every night of the week, some of these idiots will still be out there street racing. No, it won't put an end to it, but it'll knock it down a lot if we get it back. We have to have it back. When I used to go to the street races, they were mostly old school type racers, and we'd go with our Hondas and imports, and there would be a little bit of rivalry there. <laughs> There's not a day that goes by that I don't pass by a American car and he revs on me or something, and I just have to let him know that sometimes V8s aren't as fast as they think they are. It's muscle cars on imports, that's always it instant rivalry. You see a Mustang, it's always going to come down to a little drag race right there. Hate American cars because they hate on imports so bad. Well, that's the problem we're having now. They're having a little feud going on with the American-made car. And that's what we're trying to stop. We don't need to be feuding amongst ourselves. A race car is a race car. Regardless of how fast or how tiny your car is, you still, who wants to get to the finish line first? We're all racers. We just here, we want to race. My car against yours. Well, the car is a tool that allows one to show their prowess and talent as a driver. And the car is important, but the driver is really the ultimate tool. You can take a mediocre driver and put him in a great car and he'll never win. You can put a great driver and put him in a mediocre car and he can win. Dedicated to superior design and the development of highest quality import performance parts, the crew in Advanced Engine Management works tirelessly to outclass the competition. AEM, it stands for Advanced Engine Management. What you're going to see at this facility, obviously our warehousing, of where all the parts are kept in stock. You'll see an assembly area where the parts in their varying stages of completion are assembled into final kits for stock. Um, you'll go back to the R&D area where we have the lifts and the R&D staff that bring vehicles in and prepare them and do work on those for um, get them ready for the dyno and do work to uh, complete R&D projects. And then you go to the manufacturing facility where you'll see the products being manufactured as well as doing a lot of tuning on um, various racers as, and from street racers that were around at the time to various track racers. My name is Stefan Papadakis, and I'm a pro import racer. I got started in import racing uh, by going to the street races with my friends. I used to have Honda Civics, and they used to beat up on Mustangs and Camaros with those. Started coming down here after work and uh, helping out on Steph's hatchback. Yeah, I built the entire car. Basically, uh, everything Steph wanted in the car, he would hand me, and then I would figure out how to make it work. A lot of kids out there will take your money and squander it or, or maybe not use it right. Whereas those two took this car and proved their worth with it and then came to us and then we went to do the sponsorship. Uh, my car uses a 2.2 liter Honda engine and it's a four cylinder turbocharged. Makes around 700 horsepower, 650 horsepower to the wheels on like a chassis dyno. That's good for 172 miles an hour in the quarter mile so far. We started with a brand new 2001 Honda Civic and because we use a carbon fiber shell on the car, it's not an actual Honda body, but we started with the actual Honda car and took a mold off of the car. The basic car from the firewall back is like SFI approved for NHRA. It's a standard built cage from the rear and the forward of the car is just pretty much my design. Right now he's got our fuel system components on it. He's got the new programmable engine management system on it and he's got our fuel pressure regulator and the cam gears that are on there right now. From that, we have a 2.2 liter 
Honda Prelude engine is something out of a 95 Prelude, which we heavily modify with different pistons and rods and all kinds of different internals. And so it's really strong and makes the horsepower that we're looking for. Steph is, is a great spokesman for AEM. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've met a person that doesn't like him. He's very presentable. He has always got a positive attitude and he wins races, of course, all the time. The thing I've noticed more about Steph than most anyone else is he's very methodical in his approach to racing. In any good race team, from Formula One down to the grassroots SCCA guys, the guys that are successful are the ones that approach racing in a scientific, methodical method. He really has a lot of seat time in the car, so he knows what changes should be made, you know, what we should do different by the feel, you know, what he's feeling in his seat going down the track. The more I drive it, the more I get used to it. When I uh, launch this car from the standing start, it just feels like a rocket taking off. In the future, where I see, as far as this import racing goes, it's going to evolve into a full sport compact type of racing. I'm hoping the future of, of import racing obviously grows to where there's more manufacturers involved, and that's our whole goal is to is to bring this to another level, similar to you know NHRA style racing. And uh, obviously Papadakis Racing, he, he's gonna stay in it for the long haul and bring the sport to that next level. This is track number two on that CD we've been uh, spending all day. <laughs> yes, yes, y'all. Source of heavy, y'all. Rock fresh, y'all. Every time, boy. Yo, huh. yo, yo, my crew puts it down how it's supposed to be done. We give thanks for the sun, moon, stars. We're not worshiping cars, clothes, and jewels for all you fools. That ain't how the story go. Making money don't make you an MC. Every rapper can't blow. If them gun go, boom. Tell me what you know. Y'all go and run for your life. Or pull out the four four. Or hop in your ride and let the noise slide. Shift in the fifth and match to overdrive. Get to the venue and rock the party live. Cause in 1999, man, we must stay alive. No need for gunplay. Check the word play from the run of words say. 206 SEA. Time to crush and defeat all of the nonsense. For every ill action, there's a consequence. Balance, karma, the study of yin and yang. Turn up this track and let me do my thing. No more selling cocaine, just lyric I slang. On each and every block and city worldwide. It's the crew from the source and the whack can't hide. Even the blind can see how fresh we be. Ha, presumably man, I'm messing over dead in these left hands. Live and direct, raw and uncut. You a shot body rock MC. Nigga, what? Live and direct, raw and uncut. You a shot body rock MC. Nigga, what? Ladies, y'all got two minutes to really impress. Can you feel me? Take the pack off. Y'all ready? Shoot a shot, body rock MC. Rip in the spot every time he touch the microphone. Me got to keep it hot like what, y'all? Yes, yes, y'all. Lie, lie, lie. Shoot a shot, body rock MC. Rip in the spot every time he touch the microphone. Me got to keep it hot like what? All right, what do y'all think? Is it contestant right here, number one, Jasmine? Contestant number two is like Candy. All right, make it up, give it up for Burgundy up here, contestant number three, Burgundy. We have our first place winner right here. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all make some noise for Jasmine. A little sense or some T.A. Freak, y'all. Freak, freak, y'all. Fast cars are fun, but to really get attention, you need a thumping sound system. A headrest TV or a Sony PlayStation wouldn't hurt either. But for the latest in audio and video accessories, we took a trip to Serenity Sound. What we do at Serenity Sound is we do a full service on uh, aesthetics, performance, looks, sounds. We try to build cars that are very uh, well proportioned. My true background is I've been in the grocery business since I was 16. I did the grocery business for 11 years. I started uh, the business out of a garage and the cheapest way for me to advertise myself and market myself was actually slowly just going out to the show scene. And from there, you know, we went with our own personal cars. So, you know, you're talking about maybe one to two cars. And from there, we started building some other customers' uh, cars and getting their involvement and start going out and from there the numbers just started gradually growing more and more. I met Ty, uh, we were working at the same um, grocery store actually bef before he even had a shop. I was helping him out of his garage and then we got more and more and more work. It was getting harder and harder out of his house when we got our shop in Westminster and now here. Ty's style from the very beginning has been very, very good. Straightforward, you know, he's not selling you all this stuff you don't need. What I do is usually consult with the customers 
figure out what um, what kind of budget what they're looking for and the, for their vehicle, kind of customizing it for them basically as far as how much they, they have to spend and, and where they're going to go with the vehicle. Are they going for a, a daily driver or are they going for a full show? Are we going after magazines or going to race, you know, to race the vehicle? Um, whatever their, uh, their deal is, you know, I sit down and consult with them and figure out what they want to do and, and we'll go from there. We specialize in more of the car stereo, amplifier, custom installations, fabrications. I could do DVD installations, TV monitors in the headrest, numerous TVs. People usually have one in their car, now they got two, three, four, I've seen seven, ten TVs, twenty Playstations, you know, more interactive stuff. Each individual audio component is wired, usually how we do it, is in the trunk. We run a main wire from the front battery all the way to the rear of the trunk. Well, a friend of mine was, goes here, his brother and him go here, and I was talking about getting some stuff for my car, and he told me I should come down here because they do a really good job. I went to a lot of other shops, and they sold me some stuff, and like, it didn't really do what they said it would do, and I came here, and everything they put in my car, it's just been like, wow, you know, it's no difference, it's been so much. When you do go to the shows, it's a lot more fun, you know, everyone goes up together, there's a lot of cars going, and everyone's fun, you know, they're about the same age and stuff. It's not about how much money you spend, but how well you select your product and how you put your product together. What I see as a future right now is that we do have two stores presently, uh, one here in Fountain Valley and the one in Mission Viejo. Keep our, our quality uh, the way it's been and just grow a reputation of it being able to get jobs done on, on a timely basis and, and the jobs doing right and no shortcuts and so forth. The National Hot Rod Association has been at the forefront of organized drag racing for over five decades. Recently, the NHRA has opened its packed stadiums to both amateur and professional import drivers. So get ready for the ride of your life as we give you a front row seat at 2001's hotly contested National Import Drag Racing Finals. Gentlemen, on behalf of the National Hot Rod Association, look. Oh, 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 o
is a really cool rag. Dub has the beat on the import scene celeb and high-end cars. It's what you might call the real creme de la creme. So, let's check it out. Dub's an automotive lifestyle, but basically is the first ever celebrity automotive magazine. Uh, Dub magazine is a bi-monthly magazine that uh, we put out about 80,000 issues bi-monthly. The magazine was actually started by uh, three guys. Uh, one of them had a vision, and what happened is he actually saw an auction for one of uh, an entertainer's cars, and he thought it would be an interesting idea to you know, publish it so you could see where entertainers are actually spending their money and how they spend it. Just opened up a shop out here in Los Angeles, and pretty much history from there. I think initial plan was just to come out with a publication that had like, high-quality pictures and a lot of information in terms of like, celebrity personality. It's a way of getting into their mind and their automotive lifestyle. A lot of people, they fix up Hondas because I guess it's all relative to income. We cater to them because those are also the people that read Dub Magazine. Usually kids that drive import cars will inspire to drive that SUV or that Mercedes Benz down the line. But at the same time, they usually want to see what their icon's driving. What separates Dub from other car magazines is the fact that we get up and close with them. You know, we get personal. We get into the details of the things you know, how they got it done, where they got it done, and what they plan to do. Most kids uh, nowadays, they're seeing the celebrities that have the flip out video screens by like Alpine or Kenwood, or they got uh, installed just the actual video screen itself. It all depends. D-Day is basically the first ever a celebrity car show and concert. It's a car show where what we do is we kind of uh, cross paths with import cars, trucks, SUVs. We try to put on a show that combines all elements of, you know, aftermarket accessories. Anything from import cars, people that want to display their cars, to uh, celebrity cars. You could see a wide variety of different vehicles, from high end to low end. The motorcycle group, their, their friends bars, we're actually shooting them for the magazine, the Metal Militia. So we just figured bringing them in would be a different kind of twist to it. Everybody was just kind of tripping out and them doing those 40, 50 foot jumps. As far as the future, I think we just plan on expanding. We want to be able to offer our readers more. We just want to be a one-stop journal for aftermarket accessories for high-end vehicles. The girls are hot and the music's dope, but let's not forget what these shows are really about, the cars. I want my car to be known for the way it looks and be original. I have a white body, carbon fiber hood, I put a custom side vent, got an APR wing, conversion tail lights from BMW, the roof scoop from the top, it's all custom made by TPR. The 1996 Honda Civic, the exterior of a Han auto body kit, my engine, I combed up my valve cover, I have the Iceman intake system, monster flow air filter, custom interior, I have two Alpine V12s. My boyfriend took me to a car show about five years ago, and then I noticed that girls were also into the scene, and that's what got me interested. I mean, if they can do it, I can do it too. I've always gone to the car shows before, and I always wanted to have a car in there, so I had to start from the bottom, and buy everything myself. This is a 1995 Acura Integra. Steer modifications, I did a full Andy's Auto Salon, the bomb kit. Also got the aluminum deck wing on the back. Custom metallic blue pearl for the color scheme. And Trap One did all the custom graphics. The engines, basically, I have all the bolt-ons. The only internals I have are the bullfrog cams. Interior-wise, I had the seats wrapped by LNA Automotive. Gauges were purchased through Pan Auto. But a lot of the show cars, they also race too, so they want the both the best worlds. And that's what I do. I do race and show. If you're going to go fast, you might as well look good too. I drive a 94 Honda Civic Cashback. The front kit's custom made by JT Auto Salon. And then I have Mugen side skirts and Black Widow back end and Wings West Wing. Well, the advice I have to give is just go all show unless you want to race and get tickets. I drive a 91 Integra. First off, I dropped, we lowered the car. 
I added the rear wide body. As for the front flares, carbon fiber hood, a wing, molding the side skirts, shave moldings. Got the seats reupholstered. That's a Street Fighter front bumper with combat side skirts and a rear Black Widow. My car is a Toyota Celica um, 2000 model. I've got a, a Rod Melon six-piece body kit. Volk rims made by Ray Engineering come from Japan and weigh about 13 pounds each. I got a bunch of engine dress-up pieces from Engine Technology, which gave me a sponsor. A Momo steering wheel, mounted two switches for my nitrous. SRD3 racing bucket seats. Full system in the back, 2,000 watt system. I think car shows are a great way to bring teenagers together, young and old. The music brings them out, you know, the rap artists, then we got the b-boy jam, and then you got the break dancing, and then, of course, ladies. <laughs> Team Area 6 Car Club. This is my 94 Accord wagon. I made a modification. We removed the top completely, shaved the back door shut, shaved the taillights, shaved the back hatch, reinforced the frame, chromed all the suspension parts, axles, spindles, hubs, backing plates. Took the stock motor, rebuilt it. Apollo did all the interior, monkey bars did the full cage. This investment is, wow, um, I'm gonna say a good $40,000 to $45,000. The import scene will get bigger and better, but you know, the show scene's still gonna dominate the race scene. It's the way it is. Okay, good enough, Mom. Hey, Candace. Turbo, I have a secret mission for you. Lay it on me. I want you to find as many import models as possible. I want you to get inside their heads, find out what makes them tick. Do you understand? Turbo's on it.
we have three questions for you. We have three questions for you today. We have a few questions. Three questions. Three questions. Three questions for you. And who am I speaking with? I'm Gia representing AsianGirls.com. All right. And you're a beautiful Asian girl. Alexis. Emily. Melissa. Simply D. Simply D. Is that like simply delicious? Nikki Zeno, cool name. Flojolin? Yeah. All right. The first question is, what is NOS? N-O-S. Um, uh, uh, I have no idea. I don't know. That's a good question. What is NOS? She has no idea. NOS Escobar? Like yeah. NOS? That's NAS. The rapper or the drug? I don't know. The beginning of nozzle. Ooh, it's a thing in the blue tank that guys put in the car. It makes your car go faster? Nitrous oxide? I don't know. Fuck that question. I believe it's some sort of um, turbo system for your car. Nas is nitrous, and it's what makes car cars go faster when they're racing. All right. That's right. That is correct. Name five automobile manufacturers. Uh, are you serious? Um, um, um. <laughs> Um, five right now. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> Not at all. Why are you asking me car questions? I'm just a girl. All right, this is a portion that we like to call turbo tag team. Is size important? Uh, it's not size. Well, girth is size, like the width. Five automobile manufacturers. <laughs> Hold on. Ford. Mazda. Chevy. Mitsubishi. Ferrari. Honda. Kia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, do Kias make good import cars? No, they don't. Lexus, BMW, okay. Mercedes, Toyota, Porsche, Volkswagen, okay. Jag, Mazda, Range Rover. You like money, don't you? This is your car. Well, no, this is my boyfriend. Oh, okay, okay. He's not gonna mind that my arms around you, is he? No. Okay, okay. Right now. Okay. We'll make this fast. Who invented the automobile? Who invented it? Yes. Don't ask, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay not to know. No clue. I did. Fred Flintstone? My dad? Ford. <laughs> um. Ford. I'm really not a bimbo, but don't ask me anything about cars, please. I don't know anything. Can you give me a hint? <laughs> Another one. Ford. I don't know. That's a trick question. I'm, a, I'm about to say Ford. Ford? Ford. Henry Ford. We have another winner. Congratulations. You know what you win? No. You win a date with Turbo. All right. You know who Turbo is? No. <laughs> Me. All right. You've won a date with Turbo. <laughs> Simply D is a winner for a date with Turbo. That's me. Okay. You know who Turbo is? Yeah. Cool. It's like this company. It's me. It's you? <laughs> it's me. Hi, Turbo. A day with Turbo. Who's that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Turbo will be a busy man. I mean, without the music, you can't move the crowd. So it's always been since I was a little kid. I wanted to be sometime, somewhere, somehow tied into the entertainment industry. And if I couldn't be an actor, well, hey, I'll say I will be a DJ as long as I get some results out there. I love hip-hop, R&B stuff, so um, start listening to radios and you know, people be like doing stuff that I'm curious about. You be doing stuff like scratching, figure that out myself. As a DJ, I'm there to uh, please the crowd, make the crowd have a good time. You know, you're on a dance floor, you don't want to hear a DJ just playing songs, cuts out, and plays another song. You know, I play continuous music. For me, it was intriguing, it was interesting. I love to be able to um, be able to pace the mood, bring the mood up, bring the mood down. I go by how I feel and what the crowd's feeling. Being a DJ is just like, you got to feel the crowd, what they want. Like, you got to read their minds. Like. Are these people like getting bored right now? Should I play a fast beat? You know, you can't just play what you want to play. And if I play some song they're not feeling, you know, I'll totally clear the floor. If you put something out there and the crowd is just not even moving. My crew, we call it Moses, you know, because we clear the crowd out and, uh, and they're just crickets. Have everybody DJs probably bumped into that situation in the road. It's, it's a challenge, but. 
It feels good when you get the good result out of it. That makes me motivated more. You know, I have a good time. Like, uh, I like to see people dance and have a good time putting their hands up. Like, you know, if I play something like a song, it's like a hit. The crowd goes wild. You know, it makes me like, oh man, I'm, you know, doing a good job here. I was like, I'm having a good time. They're having a good time. Oh, bikini contests. I love those. They're what I call the enhancer of any performance. Any performance. You'll get a huge crowd with bikinis anywhere. I'm there to pretty much uh, get the girls all riled up, you know, like start shaking their stuff. And a lot of the guys in the crowd, they want to see them take it all off. Pretty much I play songs like Take It Off or uh, Shake That Ass just to make the girls go wild and make the crowd go wild. And they'll start chanting the songs. If you've been to a car show, you know, sometimes these girls get all wild. <laughs> Anytime you have females up on stage or not, it doesn't even have to be on the stage, on a cardboard box, it attracts and it brings up a great public. Some of the girls, they request a song, there's certain songs that they'll want, you know, they'll say like, do you have so-and-so, I want to go out in this song. But most of the time I pick out mostly all the songs of what I'm going to play. <laughs> the difference between a, a, a car show and a club, a car show is more like you're not really DJing to make the party dance. You're there to just like hype the crowd up, play you know all the latest hits. In a car show, you usually kind of tailor your music for whatever event is going to surround it. Um, if it's a bikini contest or it's a, a rap group that's going to be performing, then you kind of tailor it around that area. In a club, you, you know you're going to have to put something for them to dance at all times. Club, everything has to be perfect because you don't want to get booed. Clubs, you know, you got drunk people. You don't want drunk people yelling at you, this and that. You suck or whatever. You gotta be like professional and be like perfectionist. Best thing about it is just like everybody's there, you know, it's like it's crowded. It's fun to see a lot of different cultures come together. We're talking about Asian, Hispanics, black, whites, all coming to see a car show and basically have a good either morning or afternoon or evening. Just remember one thing whether you're a DJ or you're not, you're always listening to music some way or some form. Jackin' whips just to get away. Gaffle the fear for the make my escape. Man, handle your maxima, rip out the parking brake. Here comes baby Loonin, pushing a brand new smoke pearl auto union. Performing precision tuning. Best believe little loon I have it. I smurf up your side, relocate your GTI rabbit. Check the numbers on the engine block. That bronze jet in the quad get dismantled and chopped. Into the gray infinity in 10 seconds tops. Junior had that on his skateboard, rolling it down the block. Up in the yard until the engine pulley. Trying to put a 48 valve in a racing coupe Civic. Love that pretty Volvo wagon to be violated in a minute. Keep the baby seat, get the window slightly tinted. Throw on a chrome Alpine ski rack. I'll be right back, that silky cobra all get reviewed in ghetto motor news and track. Taking on an extended performance trip. I heard on Rockaway nights resemble twin drag strips. I saw a kid do a buck sixty on a CDR and slip. A fan my state, get yours was the borough criteria. This one got a cutlass supreme 96 Lex interior. Gaffling whips to make my escape. I silently start your vehicle up and quietly drive away. <laughs> Right at the time of evolution took worldwide flight, NYC hip hop got hit up with clandestine strikes. The Coca League, broken chunks flooded the blue black blocks. Empty lives, empty and rounds, NSC non stop, Ted Offense, Chase the city, home of the Boulder crack. With us, grip the wall, cause nobody's got your back. It's no fun, no more mountains to beat, little homies getting sparked. Surrounded by random gun blasts, fiends and shopping carts. That motor works for Varian, will vaporize from where it's parked. Yeah! Beat the gap, when method, you'll be in a food court. Darn it. My laptop, I just checked it. The favorite survival pastime of the neighborhood boys. Cats that I strip everything but the paint off a Honda Accord. The flavor standing tools of the vintage dent puller joint. Your town called Lincoln Skeleton abandoned up in Hunts Point. Food for it, all up in the spirit column. Smoking the poor cellar, got outdoor donuts and giant slaloms. Watching the world go round and round. 
thinking to myself, I gotta vacate out this town Where my own is killing each other over carpet crumbs So if you can rock a go and go flex a nine to five and once I'm too young, life's twisted, the whole city's numb Gaffling whips just to get away I hit a dealership in the boondocks and made my escape Notice that at any car show, every guy just has to pose with all the import hotties. Ever wonder what those smiling girls are really thinking? Actually, I got started on a dare. There was a contest going on for a new, new uh, import car model, and so I just thought I would get involved and just—I didn't really think anything would happen. But, so, um, but I won and now I'm here. I love being around the environment. I love cars. I have always loved cars. What I do in the show is talk about the car, mainly there just to sign autographs, posters, calendars, things like that. I actually love the people. They are sweethearts. I think the Impart Car Enthusiasts, they're dolls, and um, they're always very kind, and they love what they do, and that to me is um, sexy. The thing that's unique about a car photo shoot, opposed to a clothing photo shoot, ultimately, just remember that the car is the star. It's there, it's, it's gonna stay that way, and you don't have to mess with it. <laughs> it's all about movement and having fun and making the product look good. Okay, here we go, whenever you're ready. I'll wait for you. Yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Perfect. I've really become close to a lot of the people, and um, working with these people day in and day out, they've become like a, a second family to me. So I really enjoy my work. I enjoy getting up and, and going to see my family. It's just like that. David Beeler is my all-time favorite. He's, he's young. He's hip. He's got a sense of what's going on, and he always makes me look good. What makes my working relationship with him so successful is he listens. And you know that's kind of rare for a man. <laughs> Just kidding. I believe that I'm a very modest person and I believe it's sexier. I think confidence is sexy. That's more important than trying to bear off because that's not sexy. What's sexy is wondering what's underneath. And the girls that do that, well that's their prerogative. If they think that's what's going to help them get further in life than. What I'd like to transfer from my modeling career into a film and television career. And I probably see myself like on like a sitcom or a series. I think words of advice for anyone that's looking to get into import modeling or any profession, and it's just to be yourself, keep your standards high, and don't do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. Just have a good time. And, and, and that'll show through. Northwest, I am not so blessed. Land's red in our chest. Be spirit not weary, so we not gon' rest. I don't go on front. I know y'all see me, cause I ain't transparent. Me not rockin' for the current scene, cause currently the reoccurring theme is to get that cheese running in that rat race. Soon to fall from grace, fall flat on your face. Ignorant to the fact most black folks and black folks intolerant. Yeah, you hollering about how you fallin' in, glorifying and promoting the trappings of Babylon. Still you Babylon with that sucker duck whack shit, congested like traffic, violent and pornographic. Grab the demographics, monitor sound scan, billboard subscription, hip hop affliction, underground in the Pinned it a song for prediction.
Now it's your turn. We want to see your opinion, your perspective on things. We want to see the world of imports through your eyes, completely unadulterated, unedited. So what's your take? Because now you are the camera. Salo there. This is Indo. What's up, dog? Anyway, uh, I'm trying to set up some fat races tonight, dude, if you want to show up. Uh, Jerry's on me against Johnny's on me and some other fools. Gonna be all hardcore and shit. Oh, I'm going on a date. Oh, congrats, congrats. Cool, cool. Who's the lucky girl? But you know where Pampers used to be? Yeah, right there by the 60. We'll go to meet up there at 11 15. No, dude, I'll be there for the real. All right, don't leave. All right, later. right before they race, so we're at Glen Oaks right now. He's like, yeah, So what exactly are you guys doing right there? <laughs> well, we're, we're lowering the tire pressure for traction. Cool. Talk to me here. What's your name? Sorry. Mike. All right. <laughs> I'm all over. So this is your car, right? Yeah. By the way, this race is for 2200 cash. 2200. I was right, no he wasn't. That guy was in their own car. Oh, that's what we did at the beginning of the race. We don't we it out like that, Our yeah. boys would have done the half your frame full with you. about the bra. Hey, if you want to reach your hashbacks hey, hey, for that, hey, hey, if you want to reach the hashbacks for that, hey, we could race with the white tail race on Friday. What? Hey, relax, hey, relax, don't listen to him. Hey, relax, relax, relax. Hey, hey, but you do, hey. Relax, chill, 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 we got popped by fucking police. Damn cops. Go to another track right now, hopefully. Yeah. So I don't know who really won, but uh, I'll try it again next time. Team Hybrid Flight Swift. Zen and the art of driving. Speed, grace, 
silent flight. Team hybrid, kung fu. Snatch the pebble from my hand as quickly as you can. My name is James Lin, I'm the founder and president of Team Hybrid. I graduated at UCLA. I'm a manager at Beneficial Finance. Hybrid started in 95. Like everybody else, we did it for the love of the sport. But one day when I was just driving, a couple of guys came up to me and said, hey, nice car. Uh, what team are you from? I told them I wasn't from a team, but they asked me if I started one, they would gladly join me. So that got me thinking, why not have a group of friends who love what we do and basically start a team so we have a common bond. So it's recording right now. Yeah, it's gonna speak. Well, my name is Andrew Lee. Um, I've been in Team Hybrid for about four and a half years now. I'm a respiratory therapist. Hybrid has achieved everything I wanted it to achieve. Countless magazine articles, individual articles, Super Street and Port Tuner, um, young versions in Japan, even newspapers like in Port Beat, countless flyers. We've achieved so much that most people would probably say, you know what, my cup is full, I'm done. I think that this is just the start. Some of the older members are getting older and are gonna be moving on, you know, getting married, having kids, you know. While the new booty, the younger generation, will be carrying on our names. So there's way more to achieve. I mean, we've achieved everything that we wanted to achieve, meaning we've achieved trophies, we've achieved magazine shoots, we've achieved the ending into videos. But the one thing that we haven't achieved that has just been slipping through our fingers have been import team show up. That's the one trophy I really, really want. Um, I have great people who work with me. Um, for example, my brother um, who helped me recruit since the beginning. And motivator would be a regulator, would be Andrew. He's been helping me for the last uh, four years. And then I also got a marketing director. His name is Wayne Chen. He basically pushes sponsors in order for us to be an industry level team. And I also got Steve Starr who films, documents everything we do. And then we also have uh, Bill Harris. Bill is basically our setup man. We also have members who are just sexy. Those are our hybrid honeys. Um, they have great bodies. They're smart. Um, they're just beautiful ladies, you know. <laughs> Let's see. My role in the team is, uh, I guess, would, I guess would be enforcer slash public relations. Enforcer because I keep the people like doing what they need to do. Like when we go to shows, we need to have people like set up the trophies, put the banners up, wax the cars. I take care of all that. Focus! Yeah. Focus, Vince, focus! Okay, Phil, focus, Phil, focus. Public relations because I do know a lot of people in the import scene. I know a lot of teams because a lot of them are fr my friends. So I interact with them. So that way there's like a camaraderie because we're we're all there for one reason. We're all there for the, the love, the hobby of fixing up cars, of imports, domestics, whatever. You know, there's no hating. There shouldn't be any hating from team to team. We should all technically be just one family. And I try to give that or try to do that or achieve that when I go to shows by going to other crews and saying what's up, going to crews I don't know saying what's up, you know, making relations with people. Focus. Focus. I got four words for you, Steve. Four words. Oh, hell yeah, fool. <laughs> For our major sponsors, we have various sponsors, but I'll just name the major ones. It's Meguiar's, um, Tokichi, Slash RS, Body Pros, Brown Design, Velside, Gold Heartbeat, Charisma, yeah. Sprint, JT Motorsports, um, Mainstream Production. Those are the major ones, I have to think. I guess, you know, I have a lot of stress at work throughout, throughout the week. But by going to a show or going to a meeting or kicking in with my hybrid homies, it like, it relieves the stress, you know? It's like, it keeps me going. To that following Monday when I have to go back to work. The one thing I hate the most is one day show. I've told many of people this. One day shows, same day setup, same day show, and then you leave the same day. But yet to see a group of people there with me, doing the same thing with me, wearing the same shirt and logo on the shirt, makes me want to go on, even though it's so hot and you reach that one point where it's like one or two in the afternoon and you're just like, oh my God, why am I here? Why am I wasting a Sunday or a Saturday sweating, getting nasty, getting sunburned? And then you see everyone else and it just, it opens your eyes and you say to yourself, wow, you know, these people are here for me and with me, you know, and I'm not gonna give up and I'm not gonna say, oh God, and go home because these people aren't here. And that's what hybrid means to me. I love them, man. Right here. All of them brothers and sisters. Forever. Well, that is the end of our show, so thanks for watching and be sure to keep an eye out for the next installment in the Street Fury series. There it is, there it is, boy. Ah, uh, yeah.
Niggas holy girls type, but I ain't after her. Probably your act of a pearl white, the hook or not. And many times I done hit it. Cause we specific more times than dimes in the prison. When you broke north, I crashed the barbecue like Riddick at the garden true. That's the garden me, pardon you. Cheapers, I was told back. The whole gang access to my beeper. Call back my secretary gatekeeper. Like I ain't peeper. I said, darling, you was stupid though. You know the super villain. Home. I had this style ever since I was a child I got this upper style, I ain't flipping a while It goes, your scientific intelligence Put one point of relevance MCs who styles need elements And once the smoke clear, tell them it's The super motherfucking villain Nigga came through raw like the elements On 99 plus one of them And with a float to pull a fraud Nigga foul from out in front of him When we were tall, we had tons of fun Me and my tons of them Actual, true, and living sons of them Dead planets and guard jewels Throwing divine rules to Come through, we will overcharge you Ooh, I won't feel remorse for shit Except for one time, once I had took my fronts out and lost some shit Damn. Scientific on berserk, like red alert I really want to pick up what's nerd for cheddar dirt The funny's experiments is where I went Obviously dead bent And spent every red cent to rule you And still drop more jewels than schools do Or even TV news that's designed to fool you Ooh. Yeah, you, who hear the most grimy suggestions From brothers with fly names and ID questions That's a sequel like Victoria Teddy says that's edible Guns not ready yet but the incredible Team of MCs who broke off fakes Who thought they were slaughterproof Stomping through like North Lake waterproof Tat tat that's the end of that At the hit the bar with baby girl bartender at I told her when you come around You bring brighter days She told me you're the perfect one He told her I will rock this microphone Always. I hold the mic like niggas hold their girls tight, but I ain't after her. Probably your act of a pearl white, the hook or not. Nah. And many times I done hit it, cause we specific more times than dimes in the prison. When you broke north, I crashed the barbecue like Riddick at the garden true. That's the garden me, pardon you. Cheapers, I was told back. The whole gang access to my beeper. Call back my secretary gatekeeper. Like I ain't peeper, I said, darling, you was stupid though. You know the super villain. Home. I had this style ever since I was a child I got this upper style, I ain't flipping a while It goes, pure scientific intelligence With one point of relevance MCs who styles need developments And once the smoke clear, tell them it's The super motherfucking villain Nigga came through raw like the elements On 99 plus one of them And with a float to pull a fraud Nigga foul from out in front of him When we were tall, we had tons of fun Me and my tons of them Actual, true, and living sons of them Dead planets and guard jewels Throwing divine rules to Come through, we will overcharge you Ooh, I won't feel remorse for shit Except for one time, once I had took my fronts out And lost some shit Scientific on berserk like red